Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story number one, Catnip, written by You Sure I'm Not a Robot. Welcome to Earth, Ambassador. The human stood in the rain. A Doberman sitting quietly beside him. I believe you are here to discuss our canine alliance, so I brought someone along to meet you. This is Cranky, one of our security guards. He turned to the dog as it sat motionless in the wet. See hello, boy. This is your big moment. The dog looked up at him. Guarding, playing treats later. Long nose important. The ambassador knelt low to sniff the dog, only to be met with a growl of warning. Working, no pets, no treats, stand away. The human patted the dog's head. Sorry about that, he takes his job seriously. It doesn't matter who gives him orders when he is wearing his official coat. On duty is important to him. The Xeno stood back. No offense, no threat, joy in meeting. He resisted the urge to continue to speak to the canine. It was the humans he had to win over today. Thank you for such a welcome. My people are, I'm afraid, rather attached to the idea of your canines, and we would like to come to some suitable arrangement. The XCC had dealt with many strange requests and many difficult or plain bizarre treaties that had been written. No one in his office was likely to forget the recent treaty on restricting the sale of honey to the old swarm worlds. It was seen as an odd and perhaps suspicious that very few of them were ever signed on Earth itself. Instead, mostly confined to the Mars orbital with its supremely designed ecosystem and integrated atmospherics. The reason was simply that Earth was too wild, as demonstrated by the sudden downpour on the ambassador. Today was different, almost a test. As every teenager on Earth has learnt, you don't get a dog if you aren't prepared to walk around in the rain and cold if required. The long-nosed ambassador passed admirably by ignoring it. Cranky sat up and growled, What? Cold? Necessary? The human howled out a forlum. My name is Atos, XCC Diplocor. Our vehicle awaits. I believe you requested a tour of our normal habitation that supports one of our canines. I'm afraid I don't have a dog. I spend too much time in space, so we will stop off with Cranky and drop him home and you can have a look around. Ambassador New Sun on dry grass shook his extended limb. You may call me New Sun or simply Ambassador. That sounds like an excellent plan. I'm afraid that Cranky is the first canine that I've met. My information comes from one of the captains that encountered the species on the ship and shared his experiences with us. Atos nodded. Yes, we are familiar with the dangerous toys, had its captain. I'm afraid our people have been using the term given to him by the dog Loki to refer to your people. I hope that it is inoffensive. The ambassador smiled. Loki was quite close to our name. Certainly better than any translator we have encountered. Roughly speaking, the verbal expression of our name is people of the many found sense. But we like his more literal translation and take no insult from it. I imagine your young have such simplified terms for things, and we regard it as something similar and rather sweet. The trip passed in a haze of strange flavors. The overwhelming taste of human engineering was everywhere, filling the vehicles and reaching out from the spaceport. At some point, he was startled by a scent coming from some open ground. It was so seductive that he asked the driver to stop before he had even taken a moment to think about it. The human looked at him curiously. We are some distance from our destination. There's something wrong. He scrambled to explain. My apologies, but I must investigate this. My people produce many perfumes. Indeed, that is our major export to the verbal peoples, and I have some training in the profession. I must know what is producing that scent. Adar snuffed. He got nothing. He looked at Cranky. Scent? The dog snuffed. Cats. Cats plant. He offered nothing more. Clearly bored by the experience so far, he shrugged to the ambassador. 
It looks like we could do with a walk. Cranky's ears perked up at the word, and he jumped out as soon as the door opened, his tail betraying his professional pride. Ambassador, new sun on dry grass, could feel the scent as a physical force, a taste that filled him with something, a warmth, home, happy, that he needed to find. The canine Cranky walked with him and then sat dismissively beside an uninspiring plant. He growled at the ambassador, Cats plant, not food, and he began his patrol, scenting for anything actually important. The ambassador smiled to himself, since for all his gruff manners, the canine was still wagging his tail, something he had been trained to watch for. He reached down and touched the small, jagged leaves, gently breaking one and inhaling the scent. It was yesterday's warmth, sun on the stone, child smile. He turned to the human. Forgive me, but what is this plant? Is it widely available, and can we buy it, or is it protected? Atos was bemused. He had been given a very long briefing about what to say and do. Cranky had been chosen because of all the guard dogs that they employed. He was the least likely to give away secrets, but his knowledge of botany was minimal. Ambassador, by what Cranky told us, this is a plant, catnip, a common herb around here. As far as I know, its sole use is for the amusement of cats. I believe you can purchase it or grow it without restriction. Ambassador, new sun on dry grass, inhaled deeply, absorbing the scent of uh, sunshine, hugs, calm clouds on soft terrain. Astonishing. Perhaps you could tell me what a uh, cat is. Atos and Cranky made themselves comfortable in the car, the Zeno and Bazita clutching a fistful of herbs tightly. The dog had enjoyed his walk, but was now making it clear that the Zeno bored him. Atos was working out what to say next. He could afford to take his time, because the Zeno was totally zoned out by whatever he was inhaling from the weeds in his hand. He laughed to himself. This is why he preferred to meet Xenos on Mars Orbital. Dogs are not the only animals we have domesticated, although there is some debate about if we domesticated the cat or they domesticated us. It is a different relationship, anyway. They live with us, we feed them and protect them, and they... Well, they sleep for most of the time. Cats and dogs have been with us so long that it doesn't matter. The translators don't work on cats because they literally anything they say works out to feed me, let me out, let me in, what's that? Or something equally simple. They are clever, but they are closer to a true predator than canines. He thought for a moment and added, More humans. Ambassador, new sun on dry grass, was only half listening. His professionalism being dragged away by the sense from the strange human herb that he clutched in his hands. He was bringing up memories that had been long forgotten. The sense of his mother. His first day in the sun. So many things long forgotten. To have such treasure simply sitting on the ground, ignored by humans, was extraordinary. In a moment of clarity, he stuffed the plant into one of his bags and sealed it quickly. He opened a window and let the scent of burnt metal and humanity bring him back to the moment. Forgive me, that was not an experience I expected. He paused and quickly reviewed everything the human had said. This world of yours becomes more complicated every moment. We do not even have the concept of pets on our world. Indeed, they are now called Lokis from our first encounter. I have much to learn. Then to find such a plant simply growing in the wild, he shook his head. There is much I need to learn about your people. Atus grinned to himself. To bind a Xeno close to the human race was the whole point of his job. From the looks of it, a puppy and a handful of seeds would turn these strangers into friends and allies. He silently saluted the engineer that had earned another bonus today as he tried to calculate how much catnip humanity could grow in a hurry. Probably a lot. And... Of story. Story number two. A human walks into a disappointing bar. Written by and breaks his wheat over my knee. You know what the most depressing thing about this whole first contact space aliens thing is? You're all a freaking boring. 
Humans are freaking boring. Everyone's freaking boring. Sir? We had all these crazy ideas about what space aliens would be like before we left Earth. Maybe you all would be scary, or crazy, or you'd take over Earth or some crap. Maybe you'd eat rocks and breathe gasoline and walk through the sixth dimension. Hell, maybe even we'd be scary to space aliens. At least you could have had some real interesting technology. But it's all pretty much engineered the same with different sizes. Are you going to order something, sir? So, we get up into space and find your old pantheon of species or whatever, and you ain't got anything interesting going on. And we ain't really got anything interesting to you either. Freaking boring. Sir, if you're not going to order something, I must attend to other customers. We had all these fantasies about what we might learn from meeting aliens, or what we might teach them, and it turns out to be just one freaking boring thing. Of all the things that we could set us apart, it had to be that. Sporks. Okay. Two things. Since apparently the bird man across the bar loves freaking sporks, we get up into space, and the only thing we bring to the galactic community... Sir, I must return to my task. It's bartenders you can have a damn conversation with. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.